Hello and welcome to my 8th video on string algorithms. Today we'll be going over an algorithm called the Mölki Basse Yates Gonet algorithm for exact pattern matching. This is a bit vector shift and or approach to exact pattern matching. It is an algorithm that does not attempt to reduce the number of comparisons. It is actually essentially the simple order length of pattern times length of string running algorithm. Instead the trick is to make each comparison uniquely fast. This is done by using what is called a state vector. So we define this vector S, which depends on I. The state of matching so far is zero if and only if index I minus J plus one up to match the pattern one up to J. Notice that S holds information about more than one comparison. Conceptually P is positioned length of P places along X. So S tries to match P at positions I minus length of P plus 1 up to I. When S of length P is set to 0, we know that we have an occurrence of P in X at I minus length of P plus 1. Here's an example to show the augmentation. So for each step we update 1 to 0 if we get a match on all and the current index in our pattern. So in the end we can report a match at i minus 4 plus 1 which is at index 1. If we continue on all indices are set to 1 on the next step. When we increment only the first index in 1 is set to 0 because 2 and 3 has a mismatch on 1 and 2 characters to the left. To construct S, will it S i be the state vector in iteration i? Then index j of S i is index j minus 1 in S i minus 1, bitwise ord onto t, where t is 0 if and only if character at position j in p matches characters in position i in x and t is set to 1 otherwise. There are some special cases we need to handle for this to work. S0 must be 0, 1 to the length of p, so no non-empty substring matches the empty prefix of x. Index 0 of s i must be 0 for all i, so index 1 of s is 0 if and only if index 1 of p matches index 1 of x, regardless of the previous s. We can actually speed things even more. The bit t, where t is set to 0 if pj matches xi and t is set to 1 otherwise, can be calculated and stored in a bit matrix, where the entries hj is 0 if index j in p matches h and 1 if it doesn't match. The rows are indexed by the alphabet and columns are indexed by indices in p. For our pattern BBBA, the bit matrix for T would look like this. Now in our example we have the extra index in S and we use the T matrix to return the values which we bitwise or together. So the pseudo code for shift and or algorithm is very simple. For pre-processing, we for each character in our alphabet and for each index in our pattern, we set the index to 1. We then go over each index in our pattern again and set index pj and j to 0. Now in our main, s is set to 0, 1 to the power of the length of p. For each character in our string, s is set to s shifted 1 to the right, bitwise ordered on index x, i in t. If index length of p in S is 0, report i minus length of p plus 1 as a match. Pre-processing take time order length of the alphabet times length of pattern. And main search takes time order length of string times length of pattern. For the bit operations, if the word size is w, we can usually do bit operations in w bits in constant time meaning shift w bits in constant time. 
and or W bits in constant time. Manipulating large bit vectors can be broken down into W sized chunks. So initialize lengths of P long bit vector to all once in time order lengths of P divided by W. Shift lengths of P long bit vector in time order lengths of P divided by W and or lengths of P long bit vector in time or lengths of P divided by W. The preprocessing takes now time or lengths of alphabet time lengths of P divided by W plus the lengths of P. Main search takes now time or the lengths of X lengths of P divided by W. For small patterns and alphabets this approach a search time order lengths of X which with very little overhead. And for large pattern and alphabets this approach is not advisable. Thank you for watching this video about the shift and or algorithm. There will probably be a while before I post another video on string algorithm due to my examinations on string algorithm in a couple of days. And another examination after this. But when I get around to do it, this will be regarding the topic called approximate matching. Though you should see a lot more dynamic algorithm video coming up in the following days. If you have any questions about this video or suggestion for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description.